Hello my loves, how are you doing? It's Alice, nice to see you again. So today I thought I would do something that I don't think I've done before. I've done similar things, but I get a lot of questions about designing portraits in Illustrator. So that is exactly what we're gonna do today. I have borrowed the lovely face of Emma's Rectangle. I will leave her links to everything she does in the description. Her weekly vlogs, by the way, are incredible. If you want something chill, you want something wholesome, something nice and relaxing and calming and fun, Emma's weekly vlogs are the ones for you. So definitely go and check those out. Thank you so much, Emma. I have asked her permission to use her face and she said yes, what an angel. So without further ado, I'm gonna draw Emma in Illustrator and I'm gonna talk you through it basically. So let's go. So obviously I'm using Adobe Illustrator. I have the most recent version. I've got an Adobe Cloud, Creative Cloud subscription and I use my Wacom tablet, which I will link in the description. So I actually want to create something similar to this icon here that I created for Sophie Foster a while ago. I like how it still looks like her, but it's simple. It can be replicated into different things. And I don't know, I feel like this one turned out really nicely. So I want to sort of do something along these lines. So I've got three images, as you can see from her Instagram. And I think I'm gonna replicate this one mainly. I feel like the lighting, the angle of her face, I feel like this is gonna look the best with, well, within digital form. I'm actually gonna first lock the image so I don't accidentally move it. The main thing we're gonna need is the pen tool. Actually, wait, I'm gonna just lower the opacity a little bit so that when I do draw on top of it, I can actually see what I'm doing. That would help. <laughs> so the pen tool is up here or just click P on your keyboard and I'm gonna only outline the main features to begin with so I'm just gonna zoom in I always go the eyes first I'm gonna just zoom a little outline of the main features effectively so I just click and drag and it creates a line for me I don't want it to have that white fill, let's get rid of that. When I get to a corner like this, it's sort of bending round, but I want it to be like a solid point. So I just click the square and it gets rid of that handle thing, is that what it's called? I really should know all the official terms for this, but I have the worst memory in the world and I'm also self-taught, so I never really had to know the names for things. Um, so we'll roll with it. So that is that. If I want to adjust anything, I just press A on my keyboard or click this icon here, this like filled in arrow and it'll let me click these tools and sort of play around with the shape of everything like that. And then we're just gonna go around and sort of do the same for everything else. So I'm gonna go with this little crease on her eyelid. I'm gonna keep that as just an outline for now. I'll explain that one in a minute. And then I like to do a lower lash line one as well. Keep that as an outline too. We're gonna get back to eyelashes. I usually go back in in a minute and do that. And then we're just gonna repeat the process on this second eye. Quick question, are you enjoying this video? If you are, please do click that subscribe button and join the Alice's Army family. All right, same process for the eyebrows. I'm just gonna click and drag. And then I'm gonna leave this sort of rounded on the edge, but we will sort that out in a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy. <laughs> um, everything looks a little bit weird to begin with. You kind of you get used to what it's gonna look like and the more you practice, the more fluid you get. So even with me not having done this for a while, this is probably not gonna be the best drawing, but it doesn't always have to be the best. You just need to do it. Um, I always find that I put off creating things because I'm scared that it's not going to be good enough or that it won't look as good as the last one that I did but at the end of the day everything's relative and it's not that much of a problem if I don't like it I can always do it again and basically I need to not be so hard on myself so yeah if you're similar to me in that sense where you kind of don't do things because you're afraid they're not going to look okay they're never gonna look okay if you don't just give it a go so as you can see i'm just going around the nose right now and i'll do the nostrils as you can see some of the points are just lines and some of them are shapes it sort of depends on the area that i'm doing again a bit of trial and error 
Okay, so we have the outlines of the eyes, the nose, the eyebrows, then I'm gonna do the lips and Emma has overlined her lips. So I'm gonna go with the outer line. Um, the first thing that I do is where the lips join and then I'm gonna go back round and do the bottom lip and the top lip. I should probably also say that there's not a right or wrong way of doing things like this. Like I just do it the way I've always found comfortable. Sometimes I'll update how I do it. Sometimes it's different depending on how I'm feeling. But yeah, it's just what you find comfortable. And as long as the finished result is something that you're happy with and something that you'd want to share online or with your friends, then who cares what anyone else thinks? All right, so we've got the main sort of outlines. I'm gonna go back in now and just do her eyes. So for this, I use the ellipse tool. I'm gonna go right in the center, hold shift and command, nope, shift and alt, and drag it out so it matches where the eye is. And then I'm gonna copy and paste in place. I always forget the shortcut for this, so it's just up here and resize that so now i've got another circle that is exactly aligned and then i just click both of them and copy them over to this side to copy i'm just holding alt i'm actually going to make this one a little bit smaller because obviously it's a little bit further back so naturally it will be a little bit smaller than the other one okay we're going to leave it for that for now still looks crazy let's just do the jawline quickly and then we'll get into adding a little bit of color Now I'm just going to unlock the bottom layer again briefly and I'm just going to put the opacity back to 100 just so I can pick up some of the colours that I need. I'm going to lock it so I don't accidentally move it. So let's pick up the eye colour. I'm going to just sort of click around until I find an eye colour similar. And then for the outline we're just going to select a darker shade because generally everyone has like a bit of a darker outline. And then all I'm gonna do is get the eraser tool and get rid of this bit and then put the eyeliner in front. And then it's sort of looking a little bit more normal now. <laughs> to be honest, I could, I should have done this the other way around. So I'm gonna just copy this over. Now it's got the colors in it. I might as well copy it over like this. All right, so as you can see, this bit's sort of overlapping and looks a little bit weird. We're gonna fix it. So these lines here on her actual face, she doesn't have thick black eyeliner on. But what we're gonna do is color these in like a skin tone shade, make them a bit fatter. And then up here in the stroke tool, I can change the style of them. And I'm gonna click this one. So it's sort of thick on one end and then tapers to a thin line. And again, if I want to change anything, I just use the arrow tool, the direct selection tool. And because there is a little bit of an overlap there, I'm just gonna erase a little bit of this. We need to put the eyeliner back on top. So for the hair, I'm gonna just quickly outline it as is and then I'll probably end up changing it um, in a little bit. So I'm gonna go from the part in. And now I have a line across her face. It will make sense, <laughs> I promise. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just fill it with, I guess, whatever color I can find. There's a lot of different tones in Emma's hair, so it'll take a little bit of extra work, but hopefully it'll work out in the end, right? So all I'm doing here, I keep doing it without explaining, my bad. So all I'm doing here is clicking the area I want to fill. So for her eyebrows, if I click it, it highlights blue. I'm then pressing I on my keyboard, which is the eyedropper tool. And by clicking that, it means that I can pick up any color and put it in that shape. So obviously for the eyebrows, we want like a darker browny sort of shade. Obviously we can change this. And then I'll just quickly do a skin tone shade. I always find it so tricky to pick up a skin tone shade that's sort of in the middle. All right, she's looking cray cray. So the problem here is that the layers are in the wrong order. So what I'm gonna do is send this skin layer to the back and then I'm just gonna push it forward once more. So now the skin tone is behind everything. As you can see, this bit of hair is cutting over the face and that's because I didn't bother sort of outlining it. I just went behind because if I'm sending this to the back like that, 
there's no need for me to because the face itself is already making that shape i'm actually going to just push out her cheekbone a little bit cool <laughs> this looks so scary okay right i'm gonna bring the photo itself back to the front so i can pick up the lip color we have lips let's send that to the back again i now i'm gonna go and play around with these outlines so if you leave these outlines as like solid flat ended outlines or they're called strokes they're gonna just look strange so what i like to do is i'm just gonna click all of them and all i'm gonna do is pick up the skin tone color that i used before make it darker again we can change this further down the line if we need to and then up here in the stroke panel I'm going to go to this bit again where it lets me change what the profile looks like and I'm going to go on to this one and then if I click off you can see it's softened everything and it all blends together more um, and you can change the width of each one all right cool and then there's actually one down here behind this lip let's bring that back to the front and for this one I'm just gonna see which one looks best really um so we want it to be like a dark red shade and then for the nose ring uh i usually adjust this later down the line but it's the same principle go into the stroke panel tool change the uniform of it to a tapered one and then we can color that in silver okie doke and i'm gonna quickly just do the eye the whites of the eye now that does not look like Emma yet at all. <laughs> um, this is usually where I could give up and be like, nope, I'm done. I don't like it. It looks weird, but persevere. <laughs> um, I'm now going to do the eyelashes. So I want it in black and I'm just going to guesstimate where the eyelashes are. So I've done the lashes over the original image. I'm gonna send that image to the back again so I can see my drawing. And as you can see, they look like crazy weird spider lash things. Um, really stubby and strange. So we're gonna highlight them all. So what I've done here is I've gone into the stroke panel and I've clicked this profile here and I will change the width of it all. However, because I've drawn some of them the wrong way around, I need to do this differently so these ones are all upside down as you can tell and all you need to do is click this and it'll flip it back around the other way so i've grouped them and i'm just going to pump them up as like far as they go and then again same principle for these lashes i always find the bottom lashes harder to do i don't know why i feel like they always look strange All right, I'm actually gonna quickly go to my kickboxing class and I will rejoin you to finish this drawing. I'm back, it's the next day. I am wearing a very jazzy shirt and we're gonna carry on with Emma's drawing. As you can see, we've got the basic shape. I'm gonna quickly outline the shirt. Basically all I want right now is block colors. I don't want anything too complicated. So I'm gonna outline sort of where the rest of this hair is. Um, okay, so let's quickly do the shirt like that. I'm just going to fill that in. I'll do it white for now, send it to the back. And then finally, the little bit of neck that we can see. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the basic face shape. It looks more like Emma now. She still looks very flat, <laughs> but we can fix this. Don't worry. So now it's about the shading and in a lot of my art pieces or artwork or whatever whatever you want to call it i add quite a lot of detailed shading and get it as realistic as possible but in this case i do want it to look more cartoon more flat image shape like the one i did for sophie so again we're going to bring the initial drawing i keep calling it a drawing it's not a drawing it's a photo um <laughs> back to the front and i'm gonna just sort of guesstimate where contour would be and see how this looks she's got it round her head obviously we'll change the color of this um and then under her jaw so let's just go back to 
the drawing so that's where the shadows will hit we want this all to be a darker shade than the skin tone so i'm just going to pick up the skin tone and just move the arrow so what i'm actually going to do is make a clipping mask so i can only keep these shadow bits within the like skin face section um so to do this i'm just going to copy this bottom layer so copy and paste in front again i'm going to bring that right to the front and then i'm going to select the contour bits and i'm going to go object clipping mask make this is in the wrong place what am i doing cool and these are definitely too dark so i'm just going to change the opacity of the whole layer although this one i'm going to make a little bit more refined all right so we're going to do the eyebrows quickly so what we're going to do for this is use the gradient tool that's kind of cool i like that and then i'm i can literally use the eyedropper tool to do it on the other one but i just need to flip it around which is there i'm gonna go with the same shadow and highlight principle for the lips and the eyes but i'll fast forward it because it's the same process and you'll see what i'm doing so again i just bring this picture to the front and i'm gonna go where the shadows naturally hit where the highlights naturally hit and i'm gonna replicate it Look, as you have probably seen, I've kind of switched up the way I've been doing things. Um, I decided to try out using like some of the blend modes and I started using the Gaussian Blur tool. I think that's how you pronounce it. As you can see, it's becoming more realistic and I'm not sure this is where I was originally going with it, but I quite like it. I feel like it looks quite cool. And the fact that it's all vectors and that I can change it if I want to, I think it's really cool. So yeah, I've added like shadow down her nose, under her cheekbones, I've sort of softened everything. I'm going to attempt her hair. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with doing hair because it's always so beautiful and I'm not a hairdresser. I am not skilled to get those highlights in the right place, but we'll give it a go. Um, so it's again, it's the same principle. I'm going to bring the original image to the front and... All I'm gonna do is sort of mirror the different shades. So with my pen tool, I suppose you could use a blob brush tool as well. I'm gonna just do the different up and downs of the hair. Okay, so now we have this bit of hair detail, um, whatever you wanna call it for the roots. And I'm gonna like before use the hair itself as a clipping mask so i'm just going to copy or press the wrong button <laughs> copy paste in front bring that right to the front and then clip these two together so that's the roots of that side i'm okay with that right i'm going to do the same for the other roots and again i shall report back I've just been playing around with the lips as you've seen i've added a little bit of extra highlight because it didn't quite look like emma's lips if you can see that it's more pouty which is cool happy with that i'm now going to do the highlights in the hair so i'm going to do i think maybe a few block colors but then i'm probably going to do the gaussian blur idea that i've sort of gone with we're just going to roll with it and see how it works Thank you. 
Okay, cool. And again, send that to the back. And these are all the same colour as the other ones. So let's just grab them. So I'm just going to cut this, click on the clipping mask and paste in place. And then I want it to be a light shade. Cool. I like that colour. I'm going to just copy that colour. And then this one also needs added into its clipping mask. So I'm just going to cut and go into the clipping mask. Save that. Perfect. And then they are those few highlights that I drew that will have now disappeared because, like an idiot, they're in the same colour. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna just add a few little highlights so I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna pick up that color and just gonna blob brush a big blob sort of where the highlight would be and then we will Gaussian blur that okay cool I'm really happy with that I feel like that looks pretty good so I'm just gonna hide the layer with the drawing in it's still not a drawing it's a picture. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it in the same place just in case I do need to go back and sort of add anything. I might do like a cool geographic background of some sort. And then maybe it's worth adding some sort of separation between her and the background. That kind of looks cool. Unintentionally did a weird halo-y thing. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I could sit and fiddle with it for hours because I am the biggest perfectionist in the world. But I think that is really, really good. I'm happy with that. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little draw with me, digital Adobe Illustrator edition. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And also let me know down in the comments below what other videos you'd like to see. Thank you very much for watching as always. And I'll see you tomorrow for another video. We're uploading every single evening this week, 5 p.m. UK time. See you there. <laughs> Bye.